Hi, my name is Dana. I'm the creator of Namastride, which is a yoga platform designed specifically for runners. In this video, we're going to talk about the different equipment you might need when starting out a yoga practice. So we'll start with talking about mats. Mats are the foundation for yoga, and I recommend getting one. They range in all different materials, sizes, and price ranges. So my recommendation is when you're first starting out, go to a store where you can actually look and feel mats and talk to somebody that may know something about them. The one I'm using right now is a cork mat. I like it because it has a lot of grip. So if I'm sweaty, moving around, I stay in place, I don't have to worry about slipping. I like thick mats. Um, I also have some rubber mats. Those are good too. And again, I like the thicker ones. But when I started out, I just picked a mat and realized it was too thin. I didn't love it, but if you start out with something that's inexpensive, you're not sure you're going to continue with yoga, that's okay. I actually keep that one in my car now, so if I wanna run and want to do yoga afterwards, I have a mat in my car and I don't worry about it getting dirty or ruined outside. There's also props, and there's three different props that I recommend getting when starting out. The first is a set of blocks, and these again range in different materials, weights, price ranges. I like the cork blocks. These are a little bit heavier. You can also get foam blocks. Those are a little lighter, but the block is designed to help you get into poses that you might not be able to otherwise. It brings the ground a little bit closer. So a lot of times there will be a lot of body weight on the block. So I like the heavy block because I don't worry about the block moving when I have all my weight on it. If you are not ready to invest in blocks, you can try a thick book or even some wipes. So setting them up like this, it works pretty well too. Always be careful when putting all your weight on something, but this is a good alternative that you may have lying around your house. The next is a yoga strap. And so I have an eight foot strap. I'm a bit taller, but the straps, another way to get into poses, you can loop it around and help get into a stretch that you might not be able to. I can't reach my foot and do this without something helping me. There's also a buckle and looping through the buckle can get into different poses too. An alternative that you hopefully have around your house is a towel. You can use a bath towel or a hand towel. And so you can see same, same idea here with the towel. There's no buckle. So some of the poses where you would loop the strap through the buckle you aren't able to do, but you may realize that you don't use the strap very often and the towel works just fine. The last one is a bolster. And a bolster is similar to a pillow and it's used a lot in restorative poses. There's different sizes, different thicknesses. This one's a little bit lighter weight. It's not quite as big as some other bolsters, but it works really well for me at home. If you aren't ready to invest in a bolster or think that looks a lot like a pillow, a pillow is a great alternative. If you have just a regular pillow, that's great. This one's memory foam. So there's a little more give than what a bolster has. It's not ideal, but it can work. Feather pillow is also another one that probably wouldn't recommend using because you want to create space and this, your body forms into it. So it doesn't um, create as much space or it gives a little bit more than what a bolster would. But if you just have memory foam, it does work. There's no need to go out and buy a new pillow to do yoga with a bolster or a pillow. So those are my recommendations starting out. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.